the best cryptocurrencies for your emergency fund. Regular savings accounts are terrible for saving money. Gold, silver, and copper are great ways to stave off the ravages of inflation. And frankly, so is cryptocurrency at this moment. In this video, we're gonna name names of the best cryptocurrencies to help stave off inflation. And when you're done watching, you're gonna have the knowledge of why savings accounts just don't cut the mustard and why high yield savings accounts and even gold, silver, and copper may not be the best place to put your emergency fund if you're looking to stave off inflation. So lovingly, tenderly, gently, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and like this video and subscribe to this channel and we'll get started. Welcome to Finance Squared. I'm your host, Derek West. And on Finance Squared, we love talking about all things personal finance, including stocks, bonds, savings and investments, and of course, cryptocurrency, among other things. And why using these instruments will help to increase your personal financial future and well-being. Saving for emergencies is in general, just a smart thing to do. You don't want to be in a position where you have to rely on credit to get you through some tough times. Whether it's a healthcare emergency, loss of a job, family emergency of some kind, it's good to be able to have some financial backing when you need it. The problem is most classic solutions to saving may not be optimal for that purpose. For example, a savings account. Now, a savings account might be slightly better than a checking account in terms of returns you will get for putting your money into it, but not much better, frankly. Your average savings account from your average bank tends to be just plain lousy, almost always coming in at under less than 1% return year over year. Now you might be saying to yourself, does that even matter? I'm just trying to put away some money and I'm not really trying to get a great return on it. I just want it to stay where it is. Well, the problem becomes that if you're not keeping up with the rate of inflation, you are actually losing money with that strategy. Now in the short term, that's not a huge deal, but emergency funds are meant to last a while. And once you save it the one time, you really should only be topping it off every now and then and replenishing it whenever you finish paying off that emergency. You don't want that nest egg to keep shrinking while you're accomplishing this. But that takes us to high yield savings accounts from banks such as Ally Bank or Goldman Sachs. These accounts tend to have much better rates, which tend to approach and sometimes even exceed the standard calculated rate of inflation calculated by the Bureau of Labor Statistics to be at around 2% per year. And this is the inflation rate targeted by the Federal Reserve. Yeah, that's right. Central banks like the Federal Reserve target a specific inflation level. The reasons why are a whole other video. So yeah, like and subscribe. Well, that would typically be the end of this video. High yield savings accounts tend to match the standard rate of inflation. Put your money in there and be done with it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hold on. In the next few months and years, we'll not only be dealing with the standard inflation rates, I'm afraid. Starting towards the beginning of last year, stimulus spending has been going kind of nuts. It is and was a bipartisan effort, so there is no political criticism here. The question, though, with all the extra cash flowing around in the economy, chasing the same number of goods, mostly, or perhaps in some eyes, even fewer numbers of goods and services, will the inflation that will be an inevitable result of this? be at the standard 2% rate that we've been accustomed to these last several decades? The answer, I'm afraid, is no. And that's not coming from me. That's coming from the chairman of the Federal Reserve, Justin Powell, who is predicting that inflation will be greater this year and over the next couple of years. So with that in mind, would putting your emergency fund money in a high yield savings account that would net you 2% be sufficient in an environment where inflation could be 10%, 15%, 20%. One could argue that you would need a better place to put your money. Where would that place be? Sure, you could put your money into the stock market, and I suggest that you do just that. But that really is for investment purposes. Money put into the stock market should be placed in there as tax efficiently as possible. And that means putting in that money in via either a 401k, IRA, either Roth or Standard. And the difference between all those is yet and still another separate video. But if your money is in the stock market using those vehicles, that means it's not that easy to get the money out in an equally tax efficient manner. So effectively, money in those vehicles is hard to access. It's not as liquid as you'd like it to be. That is the same thing for bonds, James bonds. That joke just doesn't get old, but bonds are best used to help smooth out the volatility of the stock market over the long term. And again, are best used and purchased through a tax efficient vehicle. Now you could purchase outside of a 401k, Roth IRA, or regular IRA, but any and all realized capital gains will be taxed. And the accumulation of all the taxable events as you trade your assets will add up quickly over time. So that's not the best thing to do with your money either. What about gold or silver or copper? Well, now you're talking. Owning something like those three that I just mentioned is gonna be a great hedge against inflation. And silver and copper actually have a legitimate purpose outside of making jewelry, meaning that people actually need them to create actual goods and services. Gold, on the other hand, is still the Earth's oldest and best store of value. It's been that way for thousands of years and will continue to be so. The only problem is, actually possessing quantities of those things is a little bit hard to do. Storing and keeping gold in mint condition, as it were, actually costs money. Do you put it in a bank? Do you store it in your house? If you do that, 
What if you have a fire? Do you haul all that heavy gold out of your house during that fire while it's hot and smoky and really steaming? Or will you wait for the flames to melt all of it and then try and recover? All of those sound like bad options. All of those sound like bad options, am I right? Or at the very least, suboptimal. Is there another option that you can consider? Well, there is but it's sort of unorthodox, kind of like all the opinions on this channel, but it should be taken with a grain of salt and only acted upon with the advice of your financial advisor. Have you considered putting all of your emergency fund money, or most of it, into cryptocurrencies? The type of cryptocurrencies I'll get into in a second, but here are a couple of reasons why I think it's a good spot to place your money. Cryptocurrency has a lot of problems. I'm a crypto skeptic, so to speak, so I'm allowed to say that freely. People are investing in it, and they don't understand what it is. People are not using it as a way to transfer value, like most currencies, but are instead using it to store value, kind of like commodities, like gold and silver and copper. Now, while that is gonna be a detriment to investors in the long term, in the near term, is one of the main reasons why it will work as a hedge against inflation. And because of that, it's more useful than a bar of gold or silver. Currently, a lot of cryptocurrencies have really slow transaction speeds, which act as a way to discourage people from actually using them to transact in business. Ironic, I know. That along with gas fees of certain coins and blockchains, again, that's a whole other topic, helps to push the price of them even higher. So as long as people see crypto as a store of value, their price will continue to stay high. And during times of high inflation, their price will get pushed even higher. Now, I do believe that there was gonna be a reckoning for cryptocurrency at some point in the near future, when the price of crypto, in my personal opinion, will correct by 20% or more. But that is really just a buying opportunity for you. And I also feel the price will rebound eventually, and the value proposition will be more correctly understood by the general public, allowing for a more reasonable growth rate. That said, these are the best cryptocurrencies to hold in your emergency fund. Cardano. Many consider Cardano the heir apparent to Ethereum, and it is described by itself as a blockchain platform for change makers, innovators, and visionaries with an overarching goal of bringing about positive global change. Quite lofty, wouldn't you agree? Cardano is considered a third generation cryptocurrency, with the first generation just being plain value transfer propositions like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin. Second generation being smart contracts like Ethereum, Chainlink, Cardano, Polkadot, and a couple others represent the third generation of cryptocurrencies with the goals of kind of fixing some of the problems of first and second generation cryptocurrencies. Cardano is a proof of stake cryptocurrency. And no, and that's not a protocol designed to detect if the meat on your plate came from a cow. Proof of stake is a rival to the proof of work protocol, which Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum and others run on, which some folks have criticized for their large power requirements, which of course have an impact on the environment. This has contributed to the rivalry with Ethereum, which has among other reasons, influenced the migration of Ethereum to its new platform, Ethereum 2.0 which will shift the cryptocurrency from a proof of work to a proof of stake protocol, helping to keep it up to date with its new arrival. That said though, the key value proposition of Cardano is in developing native smart contracts using the proof of stake protocol. Cardano was founded on peer reviewed research and developed through evidence-based methods, having recently released a protocol update that introduces native tokens and multi-asset support. The update allows users to create non-fungible tokens as a way to prove the ownership and authenticity of everything from digital art to social media posts. The price of Cardano has soared in recent weeks and is now up more than 2,400% in the last year, making its way to a market cap of nearly $40 billion. Polkadot is one of those cryptocurrencies that has had quite a bit of hype on the YouTubes lately. And for that reason alone, I tend to avoid discussing it. However, it's hard to ignore in the crypto space as it has had its price jump by more than 360% since we started the new year. This startup blockchain is also considered a potential rival to Ethereum, despite being created by Ethereum co-founder Gavin Wood. The two platforms do share a common goal to empower developers to build and share their own distributed apps. Where DOT differs is in giving developers the ability to create apps that can communicate with other ledgers through relay chain. Polkadot also features the concept of a parachain. Blockchains that can run higher transaction throughput than Ethereum due to what some in the know would consider a more sophisticated design. DOT's surge has been so impressive that last fall, investors were looking at it to potentially become the next Ethereum as DeFi continues to grow. In the past year, prices have skyrocketed by more than 1,300% to make it the sixth largest crypto in the world in terms of market cap. Then there's Chainlink. Chainlink was founded in 2014 by SmartContract.com with a lofty goal of providing the data for public blockchain, particularly smart contract blockchains like Ethereum. In the years since, the Chainlink network has grown significantly and was recently recognized by the World Economic Forum as one of the 100 most promising technology pioneers of 2020. As its parent company name would suggest, 
Chainlink is focused on expanding the capability of smart contracts by enabling access to real-world data, events, payments, and more without sacrificing any of the security or reliability blockchain has become known for. Due to its foundation level for other smart contract blockchains, some in the finance world would suspect that Chainlink may eventually gain prominence over Bitcoin. Developers that use the Chainlink network pay using the protocol's native token, Link, which helps facilitate the growth of the on-chain ecosystem. As it becomes more critical to the larger blockchain infrastructure over time, it's not out of the question to some experts for Link to gain prominence over Bitcoin. And because of this, Chainlink has seen a price boom of its own of late, having increased by nearly 600% in the last year. Then there is, of course, the $60,000 gorilla in the room. Bitcoin is, and always has been, the poster child of the crypto space. It was the first cryptocurrency to come into existence and has remained the most popular in the decades plus since. Whenever anyone talks of cryptocurrency, they are likely speaking of Bitcoin. With Ethereum, and some other popular celebrity coins following on its heels. Today, it's still a great choice for both new and seasoned investors and has seen record-breaking performances over the past several months. Its market capitalization surpassed $1 trillion in January 2021, meaning Bitcoin at the time accounted for more than 69% of the entire crypto market. Because it's the most popular, it is also the most widely adopted and accepted in the mainstream, with many merchants and vendors taking steps to begin accepting Bitcoin as methods of payment. Crypto in all of its forms has begun to serve as a popular form of diversification and hedge against the risks of traditional markets, especially in times of economic uncertainty. And the uncertainty surrounding inflation that will soon or not is one of the reasons why Bitcoin is among the best to store away your money and your value during this period to ensure that your personal finances remain intact. Now, of course, keep in mind that this is an off the wall financial theory. Be sure to consult with your financial advisor before you take all of your emergency funds and put it into cryptocurrency. There is a very real risk of loss here for all the reasons I speculated earlier. And be sure to mention and discuss all of those reasons with your financial advisor. And if your personal financial advisor is smart, he would recommend that you follow informative and entertaining personal finance channels that present realistic views of cryptocurrency in new and exciting ways. You can do that by subscribing to this channel and turning on post notifications so that you don't miss a video when they drop. And while you're at it, like and share this video with your fellow crypto enthusiasts and leave a comment with your thoughts on the wisdom of moving most or all of your emergency fund into cryptocurrencies and whether or not you would choose the cryptocurrencies that I listed here. We're all dying to know. And remember, a goal without a plan is a wish and a goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take action on your emergency funds and help to protect it from inflation by using a high yield savings account, perhaps owning some gold, silver, or copper. And maybe, just maybe, putting that money into a cryptocurrency. In any case, I'm gonna get out of here. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.